In this video, I'll present a sketch of proof of Arrow's impossibility theorem. If you do not know this theorem, I highly suggest the previous video I made to introduce it. Now recall that we considered a set N of voters and a set M of alternatives and the set O of preferences, which are total orders over M. A social aggregation F maps a preference profile theta in ON to a group preference F of theta. It is unanimous one for all alternatives x and y in M, and any preference profile such that theta i says that x is better than y for all voters i in N, then f of theta says that x is better than y. It is independent of irrelevant alternatives, I'm going to write it i i a, when for all alternatives x and y in M, and any preference profiles theta and tau in O n, if theta i says that x is better than y whenever tau i says so as well for all voters i in n, that is, any voters' preferences with respect to x and y is the same in theta n in tau, then the group preference f of theta with respect to x and y will be the same for theta and tau, that is, f of theta says that x is better than y if and only if f of tau says that x is better than y. Finally, f is dictatorial if there is a dictator k in n such that for any preference profile theta in O n, f of theta is equal to theta k. Arrow's impossibility theorem is the implication for m greater or equal to 3 that unanimous plus iia implies dictatorial. So now we're going to see a sketch of proof of this theorem. To prove this theorem, we first need to define so-called pivots. So we're going to define the pivot P, B, A. And to do so, we first consider a preference profile theta naught, where all voters I prefer unanimously A to B. By unanimity, we know that the group preference must be F of theta naught says that A is better than B. Now, slowly, starting from the left, will invert the preferences between A and B. We thus define theta 1 to be theta 1 minus 1 is equal to theta naught minus 1. That is, theta 1 and theta naught will agree for all voters except maybe voter 1. And in fact, for voter 1, we're going to define theta 1, 1 that says that B is better than A. So for now, we're forgetting all the possible other alternatives. In any case, by IIA, the other alternatives should not matter. So now we have this preference profile theta1. What we're going to do next is to switch the preference of voter2 to obtain theta2 and then theta3 and so on. Eventually theta n must correspond to the case where all voters now prefer b to a. By unanimity we know that f of theta n will say that b is better than a. So there must have been a switch of the group preference at some point. We'll define P to be the smallest such first switch. That is, P is defined to be the smallest integer such that F of theta P says that B is better than A. This quantity P is actually the pivot is going to be defined as P of B slash A. Because of unanimity for theta naught and theta n, we know that P of B slash A is between 1 and n. Moreover, by IIA, we know that P of B slash A does not depend on alternatives X different from A and B. It only depends on B, A, and the social choice function F. Now, the fundamental property of the pivot P, B slash A is that if all voters on the left of the pivot prefer B to A, and if all voters on its right prefer A to B, then the group preference between A and B is the preference of the pivot. Of the pivot. So he's not really a dictator, but in a certain condition, he has the swing vote in some sense. In particular, it's important to see that a priori P of B slash A is not the same as P of A slash B. Indeed, a priori P of B slash A is the case where all voters on the left prefer B to A, whereas P of A to B corresponds to the case where all the voters on the left prefer A to B and all of the voters on the right prefer B to A. Cool. Let's move on. We will now show that if voters on the left hate A and if voters on the right love A, 
then the pivot B of B slash A can dictate the group preference of C over B. And this is very surprising because we haven't mentioned a C anywhere so far. And yet the pivot has a lot to say about the preference of C over B. To prove this, first consider the preference profile theta, where all voters on the left prefer B to C to A, while all voters on the right prefer A to B to C. And the pivot P, B slash A prefers A to B to C. Left voters prefer B to A, right voters prefer A to B. Thus, the pivot P, B slash A can dictate that F of theta says that A is better than B. This is the fundamental property of the pivot. Moreover, by unanimity, we also see that everyone prefers B to C, thus F of theta also says that B is better than C. That's where things get really interesting. Because F of theta must be an order relation, we must derive from these two relations the fact that F of theta says that A is better than B than C. Now what we're going to do is to switch from theta to tau, by switching the pivot's preference to B to A to C, and by shuffling the preferences of all the voters between B and C any way you want. Left voters still prefer B to A, and right voters A to B. Thus, the group preference between A and B is the pivot, i.e. F of tau says that B is better than A. Moreover, when switching from theta to tau, we modified none of the voters' preferences between A and C. By IIA, the group preference between A and C must be unchanged. In particular, we know that for all I, theta I says that A is better than C, if and only if tau I says so as well. Thus by IIA, and since F of theta says that A is better than C, we must have f of tau that says that a is better than c. So now we see that by transitivity, we must have f of tau that says that b is better than a and that a is better than c. Thus, we must have f of tau that says that b is better than a than c. And this is very, very, very weird. It has been deduced from the fact that b is better than a and a is better than c according to f of tau. And in particular, it does not rely on much in fact, it does not depend at all on how voters other than P, B slash A have voted. No matter how you shuffle their preferences, the reasoning, the arguments we've put forward here still apply. And so you must end up with a group preference that says that F of tau says that B is better than C. In particular, this will be the case even if all voters but the pivot actually rank C over B. And by IIA, this will still be true if this uh, pivot voter votes differently. As long as he puts B over C, the group preference will be B over C. And this has weird consequences on the location of pivots P of B slash C and P of C slash B. Let's start with the former. Consider the preference profiles theta naught that yields C to B to A for left voters and C to B to A for the pivot P of B slash A, and A to C to B for right voters. By unanimity, we know that F of theta naught will rank C over B. Now, as earlier, we'll construct a sequence theta 1 until theta P of B slash A of preference profiles by switching at stage I the preference of voter I and defining theta I of minus I to be the same as theta i minus 1 of minus i. Now, in particular, we're going to put theta i of i to be now b over c over a, except for i equals to p of b slash a, in which case we're going to switch the preference to theta p b slash a p b slash a to be b over a over c. Now, for theta p b slash a, we can, you can see that we're exactly in the setting we studied earlier. The pivot prefers B over C. Thus, as we've seen, the pivot dictates that F of theta of P, B slash A says that B is better than C. We conclude that once we've arrived at the pivot, at the switch of the pivot, the group preference must have already switched. And this means that the switch of C over B 
must have occurred before pivot P, B slash A. In other words, we have the inequality P of B slash C is smaller or equal to P of B slash A. Conversely, let's now consider the preference profile that says that left voters prefer B to C to A, right voters prefer A to B to C, and the pivot prefers B to A to C. We now switch left voters' preferences from C to C to B to A. But as we've seen earlier, this does not change anything to the group preference. We still have F of theta i that says that B is better than C, as this is dictated by the pivot. In particular, this proves that the first group preference switch between B and C must occur after the pivot has switched, which means that P of C slash B must be greater or equal on the right of P of B slash A. Combining these two inequalities yields the inequality P of B slash C smaller than P of B slash A smaller than P of C slash B. But the role played here by A, B, and C is purely symmetric. All of our reasoning would still hold if we replaced A by A, B by C, and C by B. In such a case, we would have proved that P of C slash B is smaller or equal to P of C slash A, which is smaller or equal to P of B slash C. Combining it all, we thus see that we actually have P of B slash C equal to P of C slash B equals to P of B slash A equals to P of C slash A. And further symmetric considerations would also show that this is all equal to P of A slash B and P of A slash C. In other words, all pivots are actually one and the same. Yet we saw that P of B slash A could dictate B over C. More generally, X over Y can be dictated by pivot P of X slash Z. But since all pivots are the same, this proves that any group preference is actually determined by the pivot. The pivot is thus the dictator QED.